Hi, I'm Selena Lovett, and I'm from Annie's Bookstop of Worcester. And I'm here with Jason Cordova, who uh, works for Bain Books. Um, and he's uh, here to answer a few questions for us. And he's going to tell us a little bit about Bain. Um, so, Jason, um, what exactly does Bain publish? Bain publishes everything from military science fiction to fantasy, um, traditional epic science fiction like David Weber. Um, we also do reprints of classics such as some uh, Heinlein novels. Uh, we also publish Mercedes Lackey, uh, David Drake, and we're also looking for newer authors uh, such as Larry Correa with his Monster Hunter series, which is a little more urban fantasy, and um, pretty much everything that's a good story. Tony Weisskopf's interested in. Great. Okay. Where is Bain located? Uh, we do have an office in New York still, but we are centrally located out of North Carolina. Uh, we moved down here in 2000 and um, I believe 2001, but not 100% certain on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and how many people work at Bain? Uh, total, we have about uh, not counting our technical support people. Um, we have about 20 people, I believe, uh, working either remotely or in the office for Bain. Wow. And are, is Bain a part of a larger company or are you an uh, independent? Bain is independent. Uh, if there's a it's fun, it was founded in 1983 by Jim Bain. And then uh, our first book was published in 1984. So that's uh, going to be on the quiz later. <laughs> um, and we basically we have a distribution deal set up with Simon & Schuster where they distribute our books for us and we are our own entity and we get to choose what we want to publish. Great. So how many books are published a year? Uh, we typically average around 70, um, about 70 to 74 books a year. Uh, and on average, about 36 to 40 are mass market reprints of trade paperbacks and hardcovers that came out the year before. Um, but about 40 original titles a year. Wow. Okay. What? So what about every month? Uh, six to seven. Six to um, seven months? Yeah. Like in October, we have seven books coming out. Uh, September, we had six. Okay. And... If someone, we have a lot of um, of our uh, audience are interested in writing books, mm -hmm. and how would one get a book published by Bain? And uh, do you need to have an agent or? Well, we don't. Uh, you don't need an agent, and unlike most uh, publishing houses, we actually don't have a submissions window. We're open 365 days a year for submissions. Um, if you go to bain.com/submit. And it'll actually give you the formatting that we're looking for. Uh, what if you want to insert a cover letter or anything like that? Um, and you can upload the file that way. And typical response is anywhere from three to six months all the way up to a year. Uh, I think our Slush Master General is currently caught up through five months back. So wow. he, he's uh, he's pretty consistent. Great. So. What is the process when someone's book is accepted and then you begin the process of publishing? And why does it take um, so long? <laughs> um, well, that publishing traditionally moves at the lightning speed of a glacier. <laughs> um, Bain is actually a little faster than most publishing houses. That's one thing we I am very proud of that we get the books out um, for fairly rapidly. Um, what takes so long is just the process. It's getting it scheduled for starters with our distributor, Simon Schuster, uh, finding the right spot on the schedule for it. We don't want to release four science fiction books in one month and no fantasy novels to kind of counterbalance for any fantasy fans. Um, and then it's also uh, getting the edits and the productions, uh, production stuff done on time. Uh, commissioning the cover art can take a while depending on what artists we want to get. And there's also uh, back and forth between during the edits process, I mentioned that already, uh, but sometimes we would like to do something a little bit different in the manuscript and the author says, oh, I don't know, and then we say, okay, well, it's your book. <laughs> oh, interesting. So and then, oh, and then there's also uh, like during the pandemic last year with the slowdown on all the 
uh, transporting of paper and stuff, we actually had some delays on some books because the paper wasn't being shipped. So that also hurt. Uh, that also sometimes we have to take into account during the planning process. Mm -hmm. So do the authors have any say in, in who does the covers? Uh, depends. I, I, <laughs> um, I know when I have had uh, my anthology contracted by Tony uh, back last year, she asked me what I wanted for a cover, and I told her I wanted a woman in a tank. The artist can have some fun with that. And he actually did. He had a lot of fun with it. Um, but other uh, other authors have a very specific image, and some just say, I don't care. And it really depends, because some, author, some artists prefer author input, some don't. Some say, I want to take a scene from the book that I liked, and I'm going to paint it. And I, I did forget to mention that Jason is an author himself. So, and I'm hoping to get another interview, uh, an author <laughs> interview with Jason <laughs> at another time. So, um, what makes Bain different from other publishing companies? Whew. Uh, well, we're, hmm. well, You're we're smaller than normal. We're yeah. smaller than everybody else. That's first off. Uh, we have tried to keep a very close relationship with our authors. Um, all the editors will, everybody who works in the office and all the others who wrote that, let me try that again. The editors who work remotely, um, they will, everybody will look at the book at some point or another as it goes through the process to go into publication. Uh, some other publishing houses, uh, books will get orphaned when an editor will leave or something happens and this, the book's forgotten and left. And that doesn't happen at being very often, if ever. Uh, we do make sure at least multiple eyes are on the book at a time as it goes through before it hits print. Mm -hmm. Great. So I think um, a lot of our viewers are going to be interested now in, in finding out what um, what new things are happening at Bain. Uh, well, we've got, um, I'm going to go ahead and share the images now of the books we have coming up in the next couple months. Uh, is that all right? Yeah, that would be great. Okay, so first off, we're starting with uh, Trinity's Children by Dave Barra. It's a sequel to his book Trinity, which came out last year. Uh, this will be coming out in October. Uh, Dave's got an amazing story of pretty much saving the world. And in Trinity's Children, it's upping the stakes now. It's no longer a single ship captain fighting to save a world. It's now an admiral in charge of a fleet, which a much bigger responsibility on his uh on his plate there we go uh next up is david weber and jacob hollows the janus file uh janus file excuse me it's um it's a sequel to the gordian uh the gordian protocol and the valkyrie protocol but it's more of a crime drama based around a more central idea the first two books it was uh trying to save multiple universes across time and space uh, this one's a little more grounded. It's uh, more of a uh, cop thriller kind of whodunit mystery, murder mystery. Uh, Jacob, as uh, Jacob spoke about this with me recently, he absolutely loved writing this book, and it's it's really good when the author is excited about the book. <clears throat> and that one is coming out in October as well. Uh, PC Hodgel's Deathless Gods. Uh, are you seeing? this as well is this fine oh yeah okay uh pc hodgel's deathless gods is book five in her uh I'm probably gonna mispronounce this uh ken Surratt cycle and um i don't know a lot about this one yet i'm trying to catch up on the series i'm only on book three <laughs> but um it's gotten rave reviews and i know there are a lot of uh, authors who have been eager eagerly waiting for this one to come out and I, I can't wait to catch up because I'm about, yeah, I'm only about halfway through book three at the moment. And um, let's see, that one's an October release as well. Uh, Eric Flint's uh, 1824, The Arkansas War. Uh, that one will be, is a reprint of a book he originally published about uh, 15 years ago. And I'm not sure if it has new content in it. I believe it's been re-edited by Eric and Tony before his death. And it's um, basically it's 
how to prevent the trail of tears and slavery in the United States. And this is um, his take on how to prevent the Civil War from happening. And it was a very, very good book. I, I really enjoyed it. And then another Eric Flint novel coming out in November with Robert E. Howard set in his uh, Ring of Fire series, uh, 1637's Transylvanian Decision. Um, <clears throat> this is the, uh, dealing with the fallout and aftermath of the Polish Maelstrom and the Ottoman Onslaught, which Eric had published uh, last year, I believe. And I believe this has a uh, Mike Stern's main storyline uh, 1632 characters in it. Um, I started reading this one. I'm working my way slowly through it because it is a thick book. It, it is a page turner, but it's a, it's a big one. Next up, we have Louis Bujold's uh, Penrick's Labors, which is a collection of novellas that she wrote uh, over the years. Uh, there are three inside. Um, unfortunately, I do not have on my notes which three those are. But I know uh, this is being released in trade paper. Oh, no, this is a hardcover. And I'm really excited because I like some of the early uh, Penrick stuff, and I haven't been keeping up with the re-releases, unfortunately, because I'm a horrible, horrible person. But, <laughs> but I do know that my, um, my wife loves these books, so she gets them. Um, after that, we have uh, The De Bear Snake Launcher by Joelle Presby. Uh, this one I'm really excited about because it's a novel set about 50 to 100 years in the future on the, the western coast of Africa. And they're trying to build a space elevator on the continent of Africa. And it's a, it's a story of, a, of a two, sister, uh, two cousins who are in the midst of dealing with family, politics and corporations as they're trying to build the first space elevator in the world and it's in Africa. And it's just a fantastic uh, story. The author lived and grew, was a, actually grew up in Africa, spent a large part of her childhood there. So I'm, it's a, it's a great book. I, I got to read it ahead of time. So I'm just very happy about that. Wow. Yeah, that one is coming out in November. Uh, Simon Green's Haunted by the Past. It's an Ishmael Jones novel. Uh, we managed to get Simon Green to write for us, which is exciting stuff. He's got new, uh, new material coming. Um, we have multiple books of his being published in the next year from him. Uh, I'm not sure which one this is, uh, which Ishmael Jones novel this is. Uh, Haunted by the Past, I mean, that, that, that was stupid. <laughs> I haven't read this one yet. I'm trying to remember which Ishmael Jones novel I have read. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Yes, this one's coming out uh, December. I believe this is a December release. Yes. And then uh, Summer's End by John Van Stry. Um, basically, take a troubled youth who's about to pretty much get thrown into prison for his gang activities. And he manages to get off planet and become an engineer on a small little tramp freighter. And in the process, he pretty much is running from who he was before, who his family relations are. And it all comes to a head uh, at the end of the book where he's got to make a choice if he's going to help people or if he's in this for himself and self-serving. And it's, it's a very good book. It's John Van Stry's first novel with us. And uh, we're hoping that it, he's got, got another one in him because this was a solid book. Very enjoyed it. And that one is a uh, December release as well. And then Christopher Rucchio and Sean C.W. Korsgaard uh, teamed up to edit this World's Long Lost anthology. And it's, got, it's going to have Orson Scott Card, uh, Adam Oyabanchi, uh, Jessica Kane, Griffin Barber. Uh, oh, they're on the screen. <clears throat> um, basically, they took the thing, what happens when aliens are lost throughout the universe and humans are finding the planets that were previously inhabited? And there's, uh, I think 
14 stories inside, and it's very fascinating. Very, um, try to think. Remember the, the explore, exploratory uh, stories that you read back in the 70s and 80s, where they were more about the excitement of finding the aliens than the wars that between them? This this is in that vibe, in that flavor. And I'm I really enjoyed a lot of the stories that were already in, that were uh, inside. Okay, so and that's coming out in December as well. Next we have Will McCarthy's sequel to his Prometheus Award winning Rich Man's Sky, uh, Poor Man's Sky. Uh, this one I have not read yet. Uh, we do not have it in the office. <laughs> it's um. It's Will McCarthy. Will's got a fantastic voice. He's a great author. He's written six or eight books for us now. I'm not entirely sure. Um, and this one's going to be uh, very, if it, if it matches up to the Rich Man's Guy, which was a fantastic book, this one's going to be great and people are going to love it. Uh, next up, we have, hey, <laughs> it's my book. <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, Chicks and Tank Tops, uh, I edited this anthology. Um, I based on Esther Friesner's Chicks and Chain Mail series. Uh, Esther has a story in it, and she also wrote the foreword with me. Uh, she's a fantastic lady. I loved working with her on this. And I've always been a big fan of hers. So and we have in this one, we got Sharon Lee and Steve Miller, uh, Kevin Eikeberry, Jody Lynn and I did two J David Drake stories, not just one, which was very exciting. Um, also have AC Haskins. Uh, a couple newcomers that nobody's heard of, but they're going to know these names in the future. Marisa Wolf and um, uh, Ro uh, Robert E. Hampson, who has a book coming out from Bay next year, his first solo book. And next up, we have uh, The Scarab Mission by James L. Cambius, which is a sequel to The Goodell Operation. Um, basically, it's, it's, it's good old-fashioned Heinlein-esque space adventure. It is... It's a fun, fun book. Uh, the first one was the first one was pretty intense. I, I enjoyed it personally. Uh, this one's a little more. Uh, I, I guess it's a little more uh, thriller than the hard impact that it had um, that it had on my reading, and I enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun. Looking forward to seeing uh, everybody else's reactions to it. And lastly, uh, Mission Critical which is uh, set in the Kane Reardon universe by Chuck Gannon, or Charles Gannon, sorry. It's also going to have stories within by Griffin Barber, Chris Kennedy, Mike Massa. And basically it's telling about the Soldiers Out of Time series where they're being pulled from the past, put on ice, and then they're released hundreds or even thousands of years later in the future to deal with a threat. It's a great, it's a great idea. Um, some of the books, have been previously published. These are all new stories. And I'm, uh, this is a January release as well. And that's all I have for those for what's coming up. So I'm gonna get the screen back. That's great. Um, <clears throat> that's, a, that's a great uh, variety of, of uh, science fiction and fantasy. Um, it's wonderful. And those are just the next three months. Of, I, didn't, I didn't have a, all the going out because in February, March, and April we have some big books coming as well, which we're very excited about. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Jason. Uh, I um, I think we uh, got quite a quite a lot out of that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I'm not used to talking that much. Somehow. <laughs> You're used to writing more. <laughs> well. Anyway, thank you so much, uh, and uh, hopefully we will uh, we'll have another one uh, a couple of a month or so. Well, <laughs> a couple of months down the road next quarter, yeah. and uh, we'll we'll hear more from Bain about uh, what else is going on. So, right. thank you again, and uh, and good luck with uh, with your publishing. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having us as well on today. Jason Cordova. Thank you.